This docuseries tells the story of the Garifuna people and how our culture will live on forever. Each episode will start with a brief segment of Garifuna history. The Garinago, plural for Garifuna, are descendants of Carib, Arawak, and West African people. The British colonial administration used the term Black Carib and Garinagu to distinguish them from Yellow and Red Carib. The Amerindians, who had not intermarried with Africans, are still living in the Lesser Antilles, Dominica, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines. Today, the Garifuna live primarily in Central America. They live along the Caribbean coast in Belize, Guatemala, Nicaragua, and Honduras, including the mainland, and on the island of Bhutan. There are also diaspora communities of Garinagu in the United States, particularly in Los Angeles, New York, Miami, and other major cities. My name is Jorge Garifuna. I was born in 1976 in a town named Trujillo in the country of Honduras. And uh, professionally, I'm a computer scientist and also a data scientist. And, uh, but at the core, I'm also an entrepreneur at heart. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work for companies like Disney and Oprah as a software engineer, uh, among other things. Um, you know, and it's, I guess I would just say that I've been very fortunate having the opportunity to, uh, to serve uh, under some of those companies. I am a Garifuna, uh, obviously, I mean, you can see my name. Uh, and uh, the time where I grew up, Trujillo, it was, I was, uh, I had a very humble beginning in uh, this town. Boy, the way you home some Garifuna. No way, let Clayton see was William Nerebe. Abairahu, you don't get the remo, Garifuna, Paranda, Nahaya, Lunayano, home, Nuago, Luago Garifuna duo, Luago Suncate. That was my native tongue, Garifuna. My name is Clayton C. Was Williams. I'm a young Garifuna, Parandero, uh, singing Garifuna music, promoting Garifuna music to the world. My mother would go and, and work, and I would spend a lot of time with my grandma. Uh, we used to call her, her name was Serapia Martinez. Everyone in the neighborhood used to call her mama. Um, so, um, you know, we used to go to uh, pick up firewood in the forest uh, to cook our foods. And uh, if we wanted to have fish, we would go to the beach to uh, either uh, get the fish from the fisherman or Sometimes we would go fishing ourselves as far as part of my, maybe some of my cousins. Personally, I started to go, I started fishing around seven years old. Um, you know, had a great time doing that as a, as a child. So I have a very lovely childhood uh, growing up with this uh, very lovely family. The first time I visited Triunfo, I was around seven years old. Okay, that's when I started learning about the other side of my, uh, my family uh, from, from uh, my, my father's side. So I had the opportunity to meet my, my grandma from my dad's side, uh, Grandma Tete, we used to call her. And, uh, and, and then, so a few years went by. I was raised, born and raised in Hopkins, Belize. Uh, growing up as a little kid, we used to go to the drumming center. The drumming center was right next to my mom's house. That's where I first learned how to play. Garifuna drums, us as young kids playing drums and just wanted to learn the culture. Growing up in a small town, it was fun. Hanging out with my friends every day. We go to the beach. We live right next to the ocean. We enjoy swimming on weekends, you know, playing as as young, young boys and girls in our little village. Growing up as close net with family, that was very important, family values was always there. I started to learn the guitar actually seven years ago. I learned on YouTube University, <laughs> which is, I was so interested because seeing different paranderos, I know that being a parandero, 
But then there was somebody who plays the guitar and sing. So I wanted to be, be a parandero, same as Andy Palacio, Aurelio Martinez, Paul Nabol, all these guys play a guitar and sing. So I was like, I needed to learn it. I already started to write music, so the guitar just came in and it came naturally. I would say that some of the best experiences of my life happened in Triunfo. So I remember my dad sent me, sent me a bike, a BMX bike. So this bike, I, I, even though I was, I wanted to use the bike, okay, I think at that early age I was more interested in learning how this bike operated. So I would disassemble it every single day, assemble it back, and every time I would do that, I would come across a new problem to solve, okay? So I got very good very quickly at disassembling this bike every day for no apparent reason, <laughs> okay? Other than to learn how this thing works and get practice. Before I knew it, there was a bike shop right in the corner of my where my grandma Tete used to live. Vicky, the owner of the shop, the bike shop, he said, hey, uh, here, fix this. You know, it was maybe a flat on the inner tube, okay? I fixed it because I already had some practice for my bike at home, and he paid me one lempira. Uh, to me, the most challenge was like uh, learning it, but really playing Garifuna music, the strumming is different. So I had to watch like YouTube videos also with live performances from these guys just to learn to pick up that strum. Because it's a different strum for Garifuna music. It's different from playing any other music. So that was a challenge. I didn't have a Garifuna mentor or anybody that showed me how to do strumming. I just, like I said, I would look at videos or if somebody is performing live, that's where I would go and see how they do it and the movements of the hands and so forth. So, but I also would also play with different people who come to the drumming school tourists or whoever bring in their guitars, I'm like, can I join you guys in a jump session? You know, practicing my cards as well, trying to get better at it. It was an everyday thing. My mom would be like, I'm up 3 a.m. Casa Badiba, what you doing up so late? I'm trying to learn the guitar, learning my vocals and stuff like that. Same principles that I used with the bikes in three and four, as well as disassembling this thing every day for no apparent reason and reassembling it again. I took that and it transitioned very well into computer. Okay, I would disassemble this computer every day and every time I would assemble it back, I would learn something new. As I got good at this, fixing these computers, I would help my teachers at school, in high school, okay, solve their computer problems. And then they started, one day I remember they said, hey, I have a friend who has a problem with the computer. Can you help me fix it? Okay, I said, yeah, for sure. So I went, I, I knocked on the door of the uh, of this client. So he opened the door, and you know he I'm there, and then he looks like, okay, where's the where's the computer tech? All right, and I'm like, I, I'm I'm here to help you out with the computer problem, right? So you know he explained the problem to me. I looked at it, I solved the problem, and he said, how much do I owe you? I said, uh, twenty five dollars. And he said, oh, okay, good. And he paid me. We get it. We're ready for tonight. Oh, yeah.
garina go wagia wagiele garina go wagia the most challenge in the music is really the support you know i believe a lot of us musicians we do a lot we do a lot and it's a lot that goes into production of music and sometimes i see like some people they just they don't they don't really support it they will come to a party but you know the music is out there sometimes it's even free on youtube i mean like we could all share somebody's music like the support to me that is one of the challenges that we face even worse during times like these during a pandemic we we was we didn't get the opportunity to do a lot of performances so we had to go online and started to stream and sometimes you will see you still don't get that support even though people at home doing nothing but i would say again uh when you when people see us upload new music videos upload new songs like share it download it stream it you know that for the little bit that we make from these streaming, you know, it's, it also support the artists so they can do more stuff like that. A music video, it's not cheap. Nothing in music, production, a whole album, mix, master, and, you know, so we need all the support that we can get from our people. We have a lot of Garifuna people. All our music and videos are supposed to be up, like streaming like crazy. <laughs> Growing up in Trujillo, my grandma and my mom and my cousins. When we wanted to eat, we just go to the forest and grab wood, get the bananas, go to the ocean to get everything we needed for our lunch, okay? How much money do we need for that? Almost zero. Most of the thing that we needed was our own energy, okay, to go out and grab the things that we needed. Obviously, we living in the world today when that is not necessarily the case, especially as a Garifuna culture, okay? We are dispersed across different parts of the world. Uh, here in the United States, it's just one segment, uh, but then we're also in different countries, including Honduras, some in Nicaragua, Guatemala, Belize, including Germany, uh, Japan, and, you know, and, and so on and so forth, just to name a few. Anything that we do, in this modern world requires literally financial literacy, okay? Whereby I believe that the individuals that are not versed in financial literacy, you know, are in a world of trouble or could be in a world of trouble. If you don't have the discipline to, to be financially literate, it's very easy, okay, to just think that, oh, it's just a dollar or it's just 50 cents, right? But one thing I learned early on after getting my first real job, okay, was that it doesn't really matter how much you make. Um, at the end of the day, what counts a lot more is what you keep, okay? It's what you keep, right? So when I realized that, it made me learn and try to understand a lot more as to what it takes to keep more of what you make. Not just spend it all, because it's very easy to spend it all. Hey, on the land issues back home, I believe that people should hold on to their land, especially their farmland and their beach land. I've seen and heard of instances where people come and purchase the land from, from the locals for a little bit or nothing. Uh, I believe that we need to really hold on to our land. That's, and also fight for the land that, they, like the government or whoever are trying to take from us. We gotta, we gotta come together and fight for it. We've, we've known to live along the coast, okay? Which is considered prime land, okay? Now, we've been living there since our inception into this country. However, now we have what they call globalization, okay? And that is starting to affect us as a community, okay? Because now we have our land 
that is desired by external entities. And my understanding, based on my observation, is that they're willing to do anything it takes to get some of those land, including going after owners and our people to pretty much terminate them, okay? exterminate them, to murder them. Right? So that's, that's, that's my understanding based on my observation. I believe we got to come together in whatever means. Maybe the Garifuna Council could, you know, bring people together in however way they want to do it. We, we all live in small communities. It won't be hard to bring our people together, I believe, and then we go from there. So we do need a lot of help, okay? And then we're, we're, we're doing our best. We're trying. There are, uh, in the education uh, sector, we also need assistance. At the moment, some issues Garifuna faces, we, the grown-ups or the elders, are not speaking the language to the younger ones. So it's affecting the language. How will it, how will it live on if we're not... If we're not teaching, if we're not teaching our kids how to cook the food, how to play the drums, how to speak the language. So I believe that is something that we, we, we need to work more on that, you know, talk to our kids in the language. Now a lot of young people, young kids now speak Creole at home. Back then we only speak English and Garifuna at home. Knowing from my mom, she was like, Nobody couldn't speak any other languages at home if it wasn't English or Garifuna. Or for the people who come from Honduras or wherever, that includes with Spanish. I mean, maybe, maybe somebody could start like an online course, maybe. Say, Garifuna for young people. Garifuna course or online language course. Ah, yeah, we're here tonight, show time at the Prince Hall, Seawoods, G King. A lot of different artists today is a Garifuna celebration. So we get it ready for tonight. Ah, yeah. <laughs>
Thank you.